What's up everybody? Hope you're all doing really well. You might have seen our recent North Island road trip. During that time we got a bunch of great suggestions of places to visit but two of them in particular stood out to us. The first one is Hamurana Springs and that was from Thorfinn. It's meant to look like the Blue Springs. Which was one of our like favorite places. Yeah and be just as beautiful if not more beautiful so we're really keen to go look at that one and the second one was Odake Korako yeah from Bert Troublin and that's another geothermal wonderland and it's meant to give you like Jurassic Park vibes so can't wait definitely keen to go and visit there yeah, so we're gonna spread this trip out over two days and yep. we're staying overnight in Rotorua yes. but yeah come along for the journey it's gonna be a good one <laughs> Unfortunately, it looks like we've hit a bit of a snag. Yeah, sorry guys. It was a three hour drive, but unfortunately <laughs> we won't be able to show you Hamarana Springs. It's closed due to high winds. I guess it's a little windy today. Not like super windy though, but it's okay. We're gonna see if we can go for a walk around maybe Lake Rotorua. And it is a bit colder. You can feel it here. So I'm glad I've got my hoodie right now. Yeah, there's not really that much to walk around in this area. There's just like a little track. Yeah, so unfortunately, sometimes things just don't go to plan. But we want to still make the most of today's beautiful sunny weather. So we did some Googling and we're going to head over to a place called Rainbow Mountain. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, apparently gives you a great view of crater lakes or something. So we're going to go check that out now. I can see the mountain. It's over there. What I can't see is a car park. Yen is in the car back here. She's trying to figure out how to actually get to this mountain. How are you going, bud? This seems to be a common occurrence of ours where we get lost and can't find the right place. But yeah, trying to find the car park now. We're not on much luck today, are we? <laughs> no, we're not. But it's okay. We need to persevere on and stay positive. We made it! <laughs> <laughs> Just like the time that we were lost at the Picker Picker Wetlands in Google, you actually need to add car park on the end of the Rainbow Mountains. So yes, we're finally here. There are some signs right right before you get here that tell you Rainbow Mountain this away. <laughs> oh, yes, it's a 15 minute walk just to get to the Crater Lake. So yeah, that's probably what we're gonna do today. We don't actually have much time left in the day because we spent a lot of it driving around back and <laughs> forth, being lost going to places that have closed and looking on Google. So <laughs> let's go. Hopefully it's a good 15 minutes. <laughs> okay, so it looks like three kilometers to the summit. Or 30 meters to the crater lake. <laughs> so that's the one we're going for. Almost at the of Observatory now. The lookout, the lookout point. Or is it the lookout point? And we're starting to get big woofs of sulfur. So that familiar Rotorua yeah, smell. Yeah, definitely the Rotorua scent. So you can see how the mountain got its name. You've got all that colorful rainbow look up on the top, and you can get a little glimpse of it here. Made it to the crater. It's right there behind us. It is an incredibly beautiful baby blue color and it's contrasted by that white soil that's going down into it. Yeah. But you do need to like tippy toe a bit to get a really nice view. Yeah, there's quite a lot of foliage blocking yeah. the view. So we had to lift the tripod up to get you guys a bit of shot. <laughs> but it's an unreal blue. It reminds me a bit of um, like Rarotonga. Oh and, yeah, of the lagoon. Yeah, 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 it's that kind of blue. And it's just a very little small lookout, but you get that nice view of the mountain as well. The the temperature's dipping a bit though, so. Yeah, we're probably gonna head back over to our Airbnb and hopefully we'll have a lot more success tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Hey guys, we've just met up with Sonia, who's our Airbnb host. And funny enough, Sonia actually runs a cattery as well, which is why we're hanging out with these little <laughs> cuties here. A cattery is like a cat motel, which is yeah. awesome. So many cute cats. You're trying to give me your paw? <laughs> yes. So yeah, when um, people go away, they leave their cats here to yep. hang out. <laughs> and Sonia takes care of them. They've got like a whole awesome complex in there. Oh my gosh, they're too cute. Okay, so we do need to show you guys the Airbnb as well. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna have to say goodbye to these little fellas. Bye -bye. Peter's made good friends with this <laughs> one here. <laughs> yeah, this one and the gray one. They've been very receptive. Bye. 
give you guys the price. So it was $85 a night here at this Airbnb, which is very good value. Close the door. And this is our room. It's been a while since you've done a room tour, eh? <laughs> it has been a while, and in Yen's usual Airbnb words, this room has everything that you need. <laughs> it's what we usually look out for. <laughs> yeah, nice big comfy bed right over here. Um, you've got a bathroom which looks very clean over here. It's Not spacious. only clean, but very spacious as well. So yes, two massive thumbs up. And we've got a little kitchenette over here. It doesn't quite have a sink or a oven, but it does have a microwave, which is very handy. And Sonia did mention if we do have dishes, just leave it for her, which is nice. And yeah, and it's got some snacks, tea, coffee, kettle, all over the side as well. Another great thing about this accommodation is that it's super close to the Redwoods, which Yen and I have been to before in a previous episode. Yeah. Uh, it's only like one or two minutes drive down that way. Mm. And since we're only staying an overnight trip, we're going to try, fingers crossed, squeeze in Hamarana Springs as well as Arake Karako tomorrow. Yeah. There's not much time, so <laughs> we're just going to negotiate how to see how it goes. Also don't know if the springs will be open tomorrow either, but mm. we'll see how we go. Morning, morning guys. guys we had a good stay last night thank you Sonia for our stay yeah we got to make the most of today so we're up bright and early yes <laughs> let's head on out we made it just got the tickets it's open one tip for you guys if you are coming here is maybe give a call just in case in winter especially because if there are high winds apparently um, some of the redwood branches might blow off the trees <laughs> did yesterday so that's yes why it was and that's right it was closed the tickets here are $18 per person can't wait to go inside and check it out. Hope it's as nice as Putaru. So even though there was some disappointment yesterday, like as soon as we stepped into these grounds, all of that disappointment has now mounted away. Yeah, we've got and a we've come at the day. perfect time oh. because it's spring. There's so much duck life here that you can see all the little baby ducks too, because uh, they all normally hatch around spring. Just a few minutes into our walk and we hit this redwoods forest part and the trees are just such skyscrapers. It's incredible. Thorfinn, thank you so much for this recommendation and we're super glad that we got to see it today. And we're just at the start too. Jens made herself down to that ledge down over there. Hey it's bud. really pretty blue and it goes quite deep as well. Meeting up with Yen now. Let's see what interesting fact she's got for us. I have found that the temperature is a constant 10 degrees Celsius, but also there's enough water flow to fill two Olympic sized pools every hour. That's a lot of water. It's so much water. <laughs> So two of the biggest differences that you'll find between Hamurana Springs and Blue Spring is that here you've got this thing called dancing sand where these tiny little jet streams shoot out water at the bottom of the waterbed and it makes the sand look like it's dancing and of course you're surrounded by all these massive redwood trees as well. Now there's also a lot of wildlife here so you're gonna see different birds like ducks, ducks yeah. <laughs> swans. and swans we've also heard that there's some trout somewhere in here yeah if we're lucky we'll find them yeah and as a massive lover of uh, aquatic life i <laughs> fingers crossed hopefully we do find them we we're just talking to some people who came through this particular area and they said they found two massive brown trout i'm very excited <laughs> i really want to find these trout <laughs> been searching for a while now <laughs> we still haven't seen the trout but Peter is so determined to look for it so I'll here we are it. still looking found it <laughs> actually it was thanks to these guys here that uh, <laughs> helped me find them but yeah they're just staying completely still right over there they even look almost like logs since I'm at this little bank area as well I might as well just try some of this water yeah the nice guy at the um, ticket booth was saying you can go down and taste it Okay, so let's see if it's as fresh and pure as it was in the puppy. Man, that is <laughs> so clean tasting. It tastes super crystal clean. 
like I don't, I don't, I don't know what I just drank. I drank some of like the purest <laughs> water ever. <laughs> That's amazing. Peter is selling me on how amazing this water is. The spring actually comes from the Mamaku Plateau as well, similar to the Blue Spring. And again, it takes like decades. I think it was 70 years for the water to filter through and become super clear. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It does taste like super, super clean water. I told you. <laughs> nice. I get that thumbs up. <laughs> So we've come to the end of Hamarana Springs. It was an incredibly beautiful, serene, and an amazing walk. Yeah, we we'll totally recommend this place, even though you do have to pay $18 to get into this one. Worth it. 100%. <laughs> so we're heading over to where again now? Uh, Orake Korako, which is also known as Hidden Valley for that geothermal wonderland. Yeah. But we are a bit pressed on time, so we need a rush over. <laughs> Let's do it. Because we're running so short on time today, we made a really quick stop off the bakery. At a uh, wheat sheaf bakery. Yeah, I've got myself a little egg McMuffin here. <laughs> and I got myself a chicken kebab. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Uh, that's actually pretty good. This is pretty good, huh? <laughs> yeah. Seven dollars fifty for these two items. <laughs> we're gonna pass them off real quick. Yeah, and then we're back be on like our way. An hour or something drive, babe. Hour and a half or something. Like hour that. and a half. We've arrived! We made it. Yes! Let's go see if we can find where to buy the tickets. So a very short ferry ride, about three-ish minutes I'd say, maybe even yeah. less, that goes on demand from the office to this part. And we're here! We're left to our own to go explore now. So this walk is supposed to take about one and a half hours to complete and already it's quite amazing. You can see the steam that's coming off all the different colours of the land and just keep in mind treat all the water as hot. Don't try touching it. So if you're looking to come here, the tickets are $39, which includes the ferry there and back. Yeah, and this place is situated just between Topo and Rotorua. And we're here on a weekday, it is very peaceful. This is Jurassic Park vibes for sure. Yeah, thank you Brett Trublin for recommending this place to us. Man, we saw this sign called Arthur's Palette this way up and I had no idea what to expect but once you get up here, you totally understand. There's so many different colors going on from the blues, the whites, the browns and yellows and there's Yen just admiring everything over yeah, there. This place is spectacular and with the backdrop of the forest and the green hills as well, it's amazing. There's a whole bunch of hot pools too and I'm pretty sure this place also has the most active geysers around or geysers, however you pronounce it. <laughs> Pretty cool cave, huh? It is rather impressive and the fact that it is so quiet and serene here makes it feel really like, I don't know what the word is. Lost in time? Yeah, lost in time, spiritual, that sort of thing. So I once said that Waiotapu was my favorite place in Rotorua and actually this place isn't in Rotorua, right? That's right? It's in between Topo and Rotorua, so <laughs> we could say that this is my new favorite geothermal place in New Zealand. It really is amazing, guys. Though this is a mud pool, somehow it looks incredibly delicious, like <laughs> milk tea or something like that. I don't know. It's like bubble tea. <laughs> So we're headed now back to the jetty to catch the last ferry of the day. Yeah, we're gonna wrap things up here guys. It's been an absolutely fantastic overnight stay. A yeah. little bit of drama filled, but it's all right because it all in the end, out. it did all work out. <laughs> Thank you again for the recommendations. We love getting these. So if you do have any of your own, please do drop them in the comments for us below too. Yeah, we'll probably head off to them because we've got a long list of uh, different places that we need to go to from all you guys. So thank you all very much. Yes, and if 
you enjoyed this episode please we hope you will give us those likes subscribe if you haven't already drop us a comment all that good stuff helps our channel so we super appreciate it and we'll catch you on the next episode next see you everyone see ya.